Lucy here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my weekly deck review. Y'all, I'm kind of tired of Marseille. <laughs> That's the punchline. <laughs> but I did have an amazing time working with these decks. I think I'm just at my point where I'm like, I, I need me some, I need me more pictures. I'm at that point. <laughs> So, I actually had a comment, I think, on one of my last weekly deck reviews or something. It's like, I'm kind of ready for Rider right Away Smith again. I'm like, me too. Me too. Um, I have actually really enjoyed getting more comfortable with pip decks in general. Um, and I have really enjoyed working with the La Corte de Taroki. I always want to call it something else. La Corte de Taroki. So, this deck is out of print. I don't know if it's coming back. I don't really know the story about that. This is a um, Il Menegello deck. Now, Il, Mene Il Menegello is the maker of the deck in the sense that I think they're the ones that do the boxes and the printing and the cutting and all that kind of stuff. Um, the artist for the deck is actually Anna Maria Deonfrio, who is an Italian artist. So this is a little bit about the, with the intro slip that it comes with, or the, you know, the sort of letter for, or notice from the artist. But let me just take you through some cards. This is such a fun deck to work with. Um, it's a hand over hand shuffler because it's all hand cut. It's really like skinny and narrow. Um, I always look for a standard deck and then I don't have a standard deck nearby, but it's taller and I've also got some sunbeams in here so my lighting's a little uneven, but this is sort of essentially what this deck looks like. It's really beautiful. It's got that old world feel. It's been really fun to work with. If you hear choppy noises in the back, Peggy is making us soup. And I'm not gonna complain because I want soup. But it's got this sort of whimsical feel and it feels like I'm, I'm playing with a really, really old deck, which is exactly what I love about it. It's a very immersive tarot experience in that way. But at the same time, I will say that while I love this deck and it's not ever leaving my collection, well, I should never say never, but I, I find that highly unlikely. I really love this Temperance card. It's so pretty. I know I showed it already. Um, as much as I enjoy this deck aesthetically, I am going on quite, probably, I think almost, well, I think I went two full months working with um, Pip and Marseille decks. And I'm just ready. I'm just ready to play with something else. Um, I don't plan to do a whole lot of this sort of immersive stuff. Um, I wanted, my goals this year were to do a deep dive into Marseille and potentially Thoth, um, but I'm gonna give myself a breather for a little bit, I think, before I dive into the Thoth. I mean, it may be a week breather or it may be several months, I don't know yet. Um, but did I just put this in backwards? Yes, I did. I'm very twitchy about that sort of thing. Things must go in upright. At any rate, this is a beautiful deck to play with. Um, you can definitely find full walkthroughs. I've never done a full walkthrough of this deck. Um, I'm tempted to do a deep dive on this. I know it's been requested before, but to be honest, my, my eyes, I just need something else for a bit because I think I kind of hit like Pip. Pip. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. <laughs> like. I, I'm, I'm topped up. I'm topped up on playing with Pip and Marseille decks. And it's funny because I still haven't played with my um, Arcana Tarot, which is a playing card style Pip deck with a full major Arcana and court system. I'm like, there's a sunbeam here and then there's no sunbeam and it's very distracting. Um, anyway, this is beautiful. Don't let my, like, I guess, oh, exhaustion. That's a good word. Like, I'm sort of Pip exhausted. <laughs> it, it's still not right, but... Don't let that deter you from this being an absolutely stunningly gorgeous deck. It is beautiful. It is my only Il Menegello deck, and there's something about these that just feel extra, extra special. I'm so grateful that I have one. I'm grateful it's this one. This is the one that I always wanted. Um, at some point, maybe I'll have another historic deck, but as much as I have really enjoyed learning about Marseille decks, I will say that historical decks haven't really captured my my love, the way that I know they capture other people's loves. This is about the closest to a, a historical deck that I've really thoroughly loved playing with and looking at. Um, and even my ancient Italian tarot, which I think is beautiful, it just didn't excite me the same way as like my tarot sirene, which is mermaid themed, or um, my Marseille cat tarot even, which just had fun. It's just me, you guys. I just need to own it. <laughs> This deep dive into like Marseille and learning how to read Marseille has been like so fun for the tarot nerd in me. And I have to say, Untold Tarot remains my absolute favorite 
book for working with Marseille. It made working with Marseille a lot more fun, a lot more exciting, and I wouldn't say that the style of the book is like playful in any sh in any way shape or form it's just that her methods um that she describes in here where you're looking at directionality and you're looking at how the cards play with each other it just there's something about that that just made marseille seem really fresh and really new and i've really really enjoyed that and the takeaways from this have definitely changed the way i look at my readings even when i pull out a rider Waite smith style deck i still find myself looking at where the characters are looking um looking at what a, a line of cards looks like, which I never used to do before, and Marseille definitely, this approach to Marseille reading definitely changed the way that I look at my Rider Waite Smith decks, and it also made me a lot more comfortable with getting, knowing that I could get enough information off of a pip card. And just to be clear, when I say pip, because not everybody knows, a pip card is um, like a minor arcana card where you just have, say, four cups, like in this card, but you don't really have a scene. You know, you have eight wands. And I will say that the time I've spent, this like last eight weeks or so that I've spent working with, with decks that don't have um, scenic minors has really given me a lot of confidence with my numerological understanding, my numerological um, approach to reading tarot. And I don't know that I'll ever jump into like the kind of meanings that we see in Untold Tarot um, as far as like what the minors mean traditionally. I think I still jump into my own personal numerological meanings. And for that, I actually have Tom Benjamin's book, Tarot on Earth, to thank because it was the exercises in that book that got me more comfortable with working with my own set of numerological meanings. And I know I'm kind of wrapping up. I, I mean, I guess in a way I'm, I'm, I'm more talking about my experience overall working with Marseille these past quite a few weeks. Um, than just this particular deck. This, lovely. Working with Marseille, I think, has been a really good development activity for me to deepen my understanding, but I still don't think Marseille decks in general or Pip decks in general are gonna be my absolute go-to. That being said, I do feel not at all intimidated by working with them anymore, and when I move into a place where I'm back to random drawing my tarot deck of the week, my Marseille decks are going to be in the mix and I'm not going to hesitate to rotate them in and work with them and play with them. I don't think I'll ever do this many weeks in a row <laughs> Marseille or Pip decks again because I really missed the sort of immersive adventure of scenic miners, but it was, it was fun. It was fun. So this is what I worked with this past week. The Oracle deck that I paired with it is this little Collected Memories deck by Pam Wishbo. Um, I don't know if I showed her business card last week in case you're curious about this deck, but this is what her business card looks like. And her website is on the back. I think it's just pamwishbo.com. Yeah, it is pamwishbo.com. So these, these were a lot of fun. They weren't as um, matchy <laughs> with that La Corte de Taroki as I thought they would be, but they were really quite fun to work with. I did not read with them intuitively in the sense that I would pull, I mean, yes and no. I would pull the two cards, so I used them in combos. I just felt like they needed more than one card for context. Um, and then what I would do based on what I would pull is I would look them up in the little um, guidebook that comes with the deck, which only has like a single keyword for each card. And I would combine the two keywords of the two cards I drew to come up with a meaning, kind of like how I would use Lenormand to have two keywords and then put them together to form an idea or a sentence. Um, so I really enjoyed working with that deck, this deck that way. And it's a really interesting mix of sort of modern images, tools or objects, and not so modern tools and objects. So it's kind of got a fun, quirky vibe. It reminds me a lot of the um, Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle. And in a way, um, is a little less dark than that one can be. Uh, so I really enjoyed working with it. It was a lot of fun. This is what the backings look like. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think this is one that I would spend more time with for sure. And I believe it's a pretty affordable, excuse me, affordable price on, um, I think it's Etsy that she sells this, or obviously I guess it would be on her website. Um, but I remember thinking it wasn't too expensive when I looked it up. I just don't remember um, what I saw. But I remember being seen, thinking it was kind of affordable for an independent deck. The cardstock's amazing. Uh, I did put a full walkthrough of this deck up on my channel this week, so I will link that in the cards, if I remember, so you can check it out for yourself and see every single card. Oh my gosh, this like crummy bag though that it comes in is already falling apart. Like I, I, I do need to put it in a little um, Peggy bag. 
but the little guidebook that comes with it is just a little I just threw it on the ground um, it's a little staple bound kind of cardstock deal it doesn't have a lot of information here and the pages inside are like cardstock too they're really stiff but you can see that for each card it's got a number and then it's got a keyword so planchette number one is unknown and then if I skip ahead Coffin nail would be practicality, ancient coin would be finality, and so that's kind of how I used it. Unfortunately, or fortunately I guess, there's so many cards that there was no way I was memorizing them in a week, so I just worked with the little guidebook to get the keyword, and then I used that as a jumping off point. I kind of miss color, I wish they were full color little images, but I can be a weird color snob like that. But it was fun to play with, and it's a great jumping off point if you want to play with a Lenormand-like system but not Lenormand. Like if Lenormand doesn't speak to you or you want more keyword cards to play with, because Lenormand is 36 cards and I believe this one has 50, 55 or 60, let's see, 60. Last card in this set is Guidance, the candle. <clears throat> yeah, so if you want more, this is a really great way to do that and um, work with, like you could probably use this very similarly to how you use uh, Lenormand and it might be a more fun system for some of you to learn especially if you're not drawn to Lenormand but want to play with that sort of really punchy um, predictive direct kind of way of reading because I feel like that's definitely how these worked for me so with that said I'm going to be like taking a break from Marseille and Untold Tarot finally I'm gonna be putting this to the side so I had selected this really nice reading cloth to work with this week but I didn't use it at all because I have been carrying around my Tarot and Oracle deck of the week in this travel bag that Peggy makes. It's got like two pockets inside, so you have a spot for your book, a spot for your deck, or multiple decks, and so far it's pretty much fit um, whatever decks I happen to be working with. But over the last week, all I would do is I would just work with this part here as my reading cloth, which was perfect for the Le Corte de Taroki and the two Oracle cards that I would lay out, as well as my skull, crystal skull friend that has been coming along with me for my readings. I think I'm still working with him, uh, so I'm gonna bring him along for the upcoming week as well, but he would sit there and my cards would sit here and it just looked great. And then if I needed more space, I could just flip the whole thing over and use this whole big spread cloth here. So I think I'm gonna do that next week too because it's just been really convenient and I don't have to spread out my spread cloth. So I'm gonna stick with that system for next week, but let me show you what decks I'm gonna be working with because that is what we all wanna know. I am really excited about this combo. Oh, there's so many dishes noises in the back, oh my god. I'm RIP headphone users if you hear any crashes or bangs. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I'm gonna be reading with this upcoming week, and I'm really excited to dive into this. This is the Glastonbury Tarot by Lisa Tenzin Dolma. Timeless Wisdom from the Isle of Avalon. I managed to get this from a seller at Northwest Tarot Symposium in excellent condition. This is very much an out-of-print deck. Um, but I'm really, really excited to work with it. I, I hate, like with a passion, oh my gosh, all the cards are stuck in here. I hate these like little cardboard trays. So this deck definitely needs a Peggy bag. I'm not gonna bother trying to carry the box around this week, so this is going in with the other boxes. But it does have a, I'll show you the guidebook. It has a pretty chunky little guidebook um, that has never been opened all the way, so I'm kind of excited to break it in and do some reading of this book this week. The cards themselves have a stunning back featuring the Glastonbury Tour. And then for the majors, we seem to have the major title and then a character. Yeah, Percival, Merlin for the Magician, Morgana for the High Priestess, on and on. And then when we get into the minors, we get, I believe, keywords except um, in the courts. So for example, we have the Glastonbury Thorn, I believe that says, for the Ace of Wands. And then we get keywords all the way up through until we get to the courts and then we have a maid a knight a queen and a king so i'm not sure how i feel about the courts yet 
I think it's really interesting that there's this like blue bowl as the Ace of Cups. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I guess I'll find out more when I dig into this deck. But I haven't worked with it at all. I haven't done a flip through or a walk through. I have personally myself walked through the deck and looked at all of the images and had my little squee moment. So we're gonna see what this is like to work with this week. The cardstock is pretty thin feeling, but it's got that kind of gloss on it and it does feel like it'll hold up pretty well. Like you can see, like when I hold it up, it's thin enough that I can see the tour with the light behind it, I can easily see the tour in the front. So it is a thinner cardstock, but thinner cardstock is not necessarily bad cardstock and we'll see as I shuffle it. But I mean, this is one of the older decks for sure. I think this was published in the 90s. Let me see though. Yeah, 1999, text and copyright. Um, so that's exciting. I'm gonna be playing with this as my primary tarot deck. And for my Oracle deck, what better to go with it than the new Mists of Avalon by Rose, uh, Oracle deck by Rose and Sura, illustrated by Nadia Turner. And this is a Rockpool publishing deck. It's fairly new. It's definitely new to me. I don't necessarily think the art of these two decks goes together even a little bit, but thematically, I feel like they work really well together. Uh, this is the back of the Mist of Avalon Oracle. There's a lot about the way that this deck is done that reminds me of, a, of my time in the Mists of Avalon, um, sister, the Sisterhood of Avalon, rather. What I really love is all these keywords that are on each side. There's like a keyword at each quarter, um, but these are symbols and landscape that are really, really sacred to me from my time in that spiritual tradition and the way that it informed my own personal spiritual path. So I'm really excited to be diving into this. There's only a couple cards in here that I haven't really worked with those particular energies more directly. Like we have Merlin, King Arthur, and Guinevere. So Merlin, King Arthur, and Guinevere. I'm probably gonna be more comfortable with the landscape than the characters, at least at first. I'm very familiar with the um, Avalon um, the Arthurian legends, but I haven't worked with them spiritually before. I have worked with um, the landscape of Glastonbury spiritually, so I'm excited to play with these two decks together, but as you can see by the art style, it is very different. So side by side, I don't know that these are decks I would necessarily want to pair visually, if that makes sense, but I'm really excited to work with them thematically together. I hope that made sense. The guidebook with this, I'm not sure how much work I'm gonna actually do with this guidebook. I have watched a couple of flip throughs or reviews of this deck. Um, I'm gonna judge it for myself. It is a really nice little chunky guidebook, but we'll have to see. I'm gonna have very strong opinions about a lot of the archetypes and the landscape in these cards. So if me and the author happen to not agree about what these things mean, it could actually make it difficult for me to work with the deck. So I'm gonna give it a try with the guidebook, but I may just end up going my own way with these. We will see. Uh, but that's the only thing I'm concerned about, but we will see. The, the cardstock seems really nice. The box is gorgeous. Look at the foil on the lid. And it's one of these sturdy two-piece boxes. So very Arthurian and um, Avalonian this week for me. Now I do still have a copy of Legend of the Arthurian Tarot, which I have talked about I've like anti-hauled it a co like at least once. I've definitely talked about it in decks that I don't plan to keep, but I somehow still have it. And after working with these, I may decide to dive back into it and see what I think um, going through it a second time. I don't know. But I'm kind of in this weird place where I'm like, maybe I need to just not, not rehome it for a bit and wait and see what I think. So I may do that. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I'm gonna be working with this upcoming week. I'm gonna still be carrying everything around in my um, travel bag here and I'm going to continue to work with um, my crystal skull who's been just, it's just been really nice to have him with my readings. I don't, I haven't spent a whole lot of time still like with it being more than just a crystal at this point. Does that make any sense? I hope it does, but I'm new to working with crystal skulls. I don't have any kind of like preconceived ideas about it really. So I'm just kind of seeing, seeing what comes up, but I don't really wanna stop working with it yet. So I'm gonna keep working with this. I would love to hear what you guys are working with, so let me know in the comments down below. What are you currently playing with, tarot-wise, oracle-wise, crystal-wise? Let me know, I'm super curious. Remember, you can book a reading with me anytime you want at supportivetarot.com. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!